Shadwick Wild is on with us on Night Sounds here. And now's the time where Joe is over there. And Joe has a lot of random questions that have a lot are of on the top of his mind. He might ask you about what your favorite food is or what your favorite town to stop is while you're on tour. But Joe... Oh, that's actually a really good one. Um, yeah, ask him one of those weird okay. questions that you have. All right, yeah. I'll, ask, I'll ask a weird question. You've been out on the road a lot. You've been in multiple mm. countries. And obviously, you would like nature. So like me, you, you are probably a fan of state and national parks. Yeah, I'm just I'm just guessing. So, I I tend, you know, as a Californian, I I love Yosemite, mm -hmm. um, and I've been to Yellowstone a couple times. They're mm -hmm. my favorites. Um, I also love Big Sur. So those are like three of my big national parks, and I try to get there as much as much as I can. Mm -hmm. What is your what if you could choose anywhere in nature to go and recharge and get some inspiration? Where would you want to go in the world? Oh man, I can go anywhere. You can go anywhere in the world. Oh, and you don't even have need to have been there before. Where? I guess wait, probably in this world. In this oh, it has world. to be on this planet. Okay. Yeah. This planet. So yeah, you can't like go to the is out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I think the Pacific Northwest and the redwoods. I I went there as a kid, and and uh, it's just there's just something magic about the the color and the softness of the bark and and these gigantic you know, uh, wise old beings. I think I would love to revisit that place, but uh, some other wonderful places that we've been through on our travels, the garden of the gods park in Colorado. Oh, yeah. It's a really that wonderful place that isn't a state park. I think it was a bequeathment of a, of a wealthy person that owned this, mm -hmm. this big stretch of land, but there are nice places like that as well. Um, and the Butte de Chamon, park in paris once after a particularly bad show that we played in paris um i went up on top of the butte and sat on the rock and just meditated on impermanence and the utter meaninglessness of it all and it was a very <laughs> restorative uh practice so well, yes I'm i encourage people to go and check those places out yeah yeah no, i didn't I, jump I, off yeah yeah you didn't <laughs> jump off the precipice and you're still here making music for us that's great um, one other question, kind of related. What's your favorite venue to play that you played? And what is a venue like your all time favorite venue that you would want to play? A lot of people say Red Rocks. That's like a big one. But, you know, where would you want to play or where where was your favorite place to have played? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't want to be difficult. I don't want to be a difficult <laughs> guest. But I don't, I love, my love is boundless for, for the places okay. that oh, I've been, the things great that I've answer. done. And so I can't, I can't pick a favorite one, but I'll give you a few if you want. Oh yeah, go um, for it. When yeah. I was, when I was uh, 19, I was fortunate enough to play guitar in a hardcore band that got booked on a Sunday matinee at CBGB's in new york city cbgb nice you know. man but uh yeah so i i got to do that and that was amazing i was i was stage right and the infamous monitor was blasting me in the face yep. and uh the smells and just the yeah every everything there, there's no level surface in the entire place like every floor is at this it's a bizarre <laughs> geometric orientation but uh it was magic to me because of because i grew up on punk rock and because because we lost that place a few years yeah. after that. Um, I also got to see the bad brains there. That was an incredible experience. Oh, cool. uh, one of their last shows. Did um, it smell like <clears throat> spilled beer and stale cigarettes the entire time? It smelled like, um, it smelled like all of humanity, all of humanity <laughs> and all of the fluids and all of the emotions oh. and hormones and, and substances and just yeah. all of it. Yeah, absolutely. Man, you're definitely a writer. Without a doubt. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. Tell us about Floating Away while we get out of here and float away with Shadwick Wild. What's the song about again? It's, um, you know, I, I, I think about water and I use water as a, an element in my, in, my so in my writing because, you know, because we are mostly water and because of our planet is mostly water and because you know, uh, the salinity of our tears and the ocean and, 
and the the river of time and we think about impermanence and water is constantly moving you know it's becoming the cloud and it's becoming the ocean and it's becoming the river and it's becoming us and um and we we want to hold on you know through the through the rushing water to the things and people that we love and and that and that we can do that for a little while in this life is a beautiful thing but of course you know all all water continues to move and and so it's about um yeah coming to terms with our fluidity with our impermanence with our wanting to hold on against the currents i'm gonna need to listen to that song a lot because i'm like in in that mode of my life right now i'm trying to figure mm. some stuff out and this song sounds like it's something i'm gonna need well we all yeah. need some type of reckoning some Ooh. type of medicine through through the music yeah. that's what i get from it that's why that's why my life is what it is because because of that for sure well let's all go to the medicine shop right now and play that song huh <laughs> <laughs> Shadwick, thanks so much for coming on, man. I hope we have you thanks, back Edward. every time you have a song. We'd love to talk to you about it. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. All right. This is Night Sounds.